Following the Alexander Treaty between the Hittite Empire and the city of Ilion, most of the western Anatolia fell under the Hittite control. Their long-time rivals for the supremacy in this region, the Achaeans, started with the military preparations in order to regain influence over this historically contested area. One of the first actions of the Greeks was support for the anti-Hittite renegades of the former Arzawan territory. Chief among those warlords was an Anatolian leader who would grow into the greatest enemy of the Hatti, waging wars against as many as four kings of the Hittites over the time span of 40 plus years. This warlord was in the Hittite records known as Piyama Radu. Wanax TV is a channel that walks you through the history of the Achaeans, from the early Greek Bronze Age settlements through their expansion, conflicts with the Minoan Crete, the Hittite Empire, the legendary Trojan War, and the great events of the Heroic Age, all the way through to the classical Greece, the Achaean League and the wars against the Roman Republic. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Born in the late 14th century BCE, Piyamaradu's lineage is still debated among the scholars. Many consider him to be a descendant and a grandson of Uhaziti, the last independent Arzawan king who was conquered by the Hittites. Uhaziti's son, Piyama Korunta, is believed by some to have been Piyamaradu's father, although this is still up for the speculation. Either way, Piamaradu seems to have been a noble with regnal claims in western Anatolia, more specifically of the former Arzawan territories, now controlled by the Hittites. During the early 13th century BCE, the Achaeans started taking more of a confrontational stance towards the Hittites, which was warmly regarded by the pro-Arzawan rebels throughout the region. It is unknown whether Piyamaradu was originally born in Arzawa or the Achaean-controlled possessions, but he certainly had connections with the Achaeans since the young age, especially with the city of Miletus, which served as a safe haven for many Arzawan exiles. As the anti-Hittite sentiment in the region increased, the time was perfect for young Piyamaradu to rise up in arms and make a name for himself. The renegade army was assembled and soon enough, the attack was launched against the lightly protected territories in Arzawa. As many of those cities were ruled over by Hittite dignitaries with limited manpower at their disposal, Piyamaradu was able to achieve critical success and the city of Ialanda was taken by the Anatolian warlord. As Muvatali II, the king of the Hittites, was busy dealing with problems to the east, his vassal ruler of the Seha riverland, Manapatar Hunta, was ordered to deal with Piyamaradu. Little did Tarhunta know, Piyamaradu was receiving heavy support from the Achaeans, particularly from the city of Miletus, whose ruler Atpas married Piyamaradu's daughter. Somewhere around 1290 BCE, the battle between the Seha Riverland and the forces of Piyamaradu was fought on the border territory of Yalanda, and Piyamaradu once again proved to be a capable military commander. Manapatar Hunta was soundly defeated and his army destroyed. Following the battle, 
Piamaradu marched to the Seha Riverland virtually unopposed, where Manapa Tarhunta had no choice but to accept the terms of the victorious warlord. Seha Riverland was now subjugated and brought under the control of Miletus, and Manapa Tarhunta was made a subject of Atpas. Piamaradu proceeded to conquer the island of Lesbos, which was likewise placed under the official jurisdiction of Atpas and de facto control of Piamaradu. A number of palace officials and also civilian captives were transferred to the city of Miletus. Next up was Troy, the great city of Ilion. A dynastic struggle had both Achaeans and Hittites involved, with Piamaradu's forces naturally supported his enablers, and soon enough the city of Ilion found itself controlled by the pro achaean forces. It was time for Mawatali II to finally react. The Hittite expeditionary force was dispatched from the new Hittite capital in Tarhuntasa to Ilion under General Kasu, who made a stop in Seha Riverland to request military aid. Manapa Tarhunta, now placed under the Achaean hegemony by Piamaradu, appeared to be sick and with his forces recently decimated, unable to provide any assistance. Nevertheless, Kasu managed to achieve success in Troy, either by diplomacy or military means, and Alexander was installed on the throne of Ilion with a treaty confirming his status as a Hittite vassal. Subsequently, Atpas also agreed to return the palace personnel from Miletus, and Hittites and Achaeans were back on being on the supposedly good terms, while at the same time Piamaradu managed to avoid the wrath of the Hatti. Furthermore, Manapatar Hunta was now deposed by the Hittites, with his son installed on the throne of Seha Riverland by the Hittite king. When Muvatali II died in 1272 BCE, he was succeeded by Mursili III, who moved the royal capital back to Hattusa and engaged in a period of internal instability on the court of Hatti. Piamaradu used this opportunity and expanded his realm in the following years, becoming de facto the most powerful warlord in all of western Anatolia. In 1267 BCE, Mursili was deposed from the Hittite throne by his uncle, Hattusili III. The new king ought to restore the peace within the empire and appointed Mursili's brother Kurunta as the king of the southern territories centered in Tarhuntasa. Hattusili wished to waste no time and attempted to quickly and permanently eliminate all threats coming from the west. The imperial army was assembled and marched not against the rebel Piamaradu, but directly against the Achaean possessions on the Anatolian coast. However, the newly crowned king was met and defeated by the Mycenaean army, which only triggered a wider conflict between the two powers. In about 1265 BCE, the Achaean expeditionary force sacked the city of Troy, killing its ruler, a successor of Alexander. Subsequently, the Hittite army marched against the Mycenaeans once again and a war over Ilion ensured significant casualties on both sides. Ultimately, Hattusili managed to persuade his Achaean counterpart to give up on Ilion, likely with a significant compensation. The Achaean Hittite peace was agreed and the two powers became nominal allies. However, the peace proved to be nothing more than a piece of paper as Piamaradu was still heavily supported by the Achaeans and the Anatolian warlord decided to invade even further into the Hittite-controlled territory. 
The border city of Atarima was invaded by the forces of Piyama Radu and burnt down together with the Hittite royal compound. As the nearby region of Lukia consisted of a number of independent cities, the rulers applied to both Hatti and Akia in order to resolve the situation and avoid further war. The king of Akia sent his own brother as his representative, a man known in the Hittite texts as Tawagalawa, likely named Tagalawas or possibly Etiocles, according to the modern scholars. Tagalawas was a person of high authority both inside the Mycenaean Greece and internationally, and upon landing in Miletus, ordered Piamaradu himself to go to Lucia and negotiate with the Hittites. The Hittites were represented by Hattusili III, the great king himself, who stationed himself in the nearby city of Salapa and the terms of head-to-head -head meeting were being discussed. Piamaradu sent an envoy to Hattusili III requesting that the Hittite crown prince, Hattusili's son Tudhalia, comes to Piamaradu first before Piamaradu comes to Hattusili himself. As Tudhalia arrived, the Hittite request was to bring Piamaradu to the Hatti king on chariot and further discuss the terms inside the Hittite camp. Piamaradu refused, probably out of fear from being captured and likely killed by the Hittites, and instead requested to be recognized as a king on the spot, nominally subordinate to the Hittites before entering any further negotiations. Hattusili knew that this would essentially mean surrender of the territory as Piamaradu had deep connections with the Achaeans and it would be almost impossible for the Hittites to exercise any real power over him. Subsequently, the negotiations broke down and Piamaradu returned to Yalanda with both sides preparing for the inevitable. Another war was on the horizon, with Piyama Radu fully grown into the biggest enemy of the Hittite Empire. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico and Estate Care for their continuous support. If you wish to become a Patreon, Feel free to click the link in the video description. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.